Hi, so I wanted to make this video because several of you missed class and I wanted to give you a little bit more um, information uh, about today's lecture. So we talked a little bit about the American Dream and we made a list and put them on the board of all of the references we saw um, about the Dream and Dreamers and we'll go over that a little bit. Some concepts from Coates, some different issues and areas that Coates talks about regarding housing and slavery and White, we watched two videos, White Topia and one about Dr. Christian Head, which are linked here in this. And you can, on your own, under files um, on Canvas, you can open up the links and see them or just Google them and you'll find it. So the essay prompt we're working for for the last essay is analyzing the American dream and looking at how people view the American dream as like, you know, the land of opportunity and place of freedom, all these great things. But Coates really has a different view and he thinks that the dream is only possible because of slavery and 100 years of sharecropping and discrimination over time that that created an opportunity for great wealth um, in this country. And so knowing that, should we wake up from the dream? Is it still something we should pursue? Um, and even if people suffer discriminatory treatment, okay? And if so, how should we go about it? The original idea of the American dream, <clears throat> um, the term was coined in 1931, um, that everyone should be able to seek a life that um, is rich with opportunity um, and their ability to achieve regardless of social class or circumstance of birth. Um, this picture is not until the 1960s, but it gives a sense of the type of American dream that was sort of sold in the media um, as a place where people could um, pursue. So Coates really um, questions this idea of the American dream because he grew up in Baltimore and what he saw on television and the TV shows there compared to what the street life he was exposed to um, gave him a very different view. Um, some common arguments and these again the, the idea of the American dream and the arguments around it you would choose one of these and include it in your introduction that you want to respond to so one of them racial discrimination is in the past is what a lot of white folks say right and isn't an excuse for not achieving equality in occupations education and social status um, the belief that if a person works hard enough he or she can acquire the American dream looking at like um, black president, but oftentimes that is to make um, people not look at the systemic problems and uh, the structural racism that's involved. Um, and you hear white folks also say things like, my ancestors weren't in the U.S. during slavery, so racial inequity is not my fault or responsibility. Um, again, these are common arguments that you could use to base in the body of your, uh, in the middle of your introduction to, to work from. So in class, I had everyone go through the text and scan, not read heavily, but just scan for anything with capitalized dream or dreamers, because Coates uses that idea very differently, and we want to define it so we can put it into our introduction. So people, there's a lot on page 11, page 29, some later in the book in the 80, page 80 something. Um, it's all over the book. And so you want to find a bunch of those so you get a sense of what he's meaning about the dream and dreamers. He believes dreamers are like asleep and the dream is kind of a mirage and he questions it deeply. Um, we didn't talk about this one, but these are some stats on slavery that could be helpful. The link is really a Smithsonian interactive map to show the migration patterns based on slavery over um, many years. And these are a list of institutions that were directly built by or on slavery, um, including universities, newspapers, railroads, insurance, and um, uh, even uh, banks. There's um, a book called Ebony and Ivy um, is the title that uh, I got this information from. And there's many more than this, but this is just a short list of, to show you the variety. Um, one point we brought up and Coates brings up as well is that there's housing discrimination. Um, we're going to talk about this more extensively on Thursday, but housing discrimination, um, before 1968, it could be legal to write into the title of a house, the piece of paper you own, to show you own the house, that um, they could exclude people of different races and they would list out the races that people could not, who could not own the house. Um, in 1968, it became illegal, but the first case where they actually contested it was 1988, so it really wasn't pushed that much to try to enforce. Um, redlining, 
we talked about a little bit in class. I showed one example, but we're going to watch a video on it on Thursday. And it's when um, city maps would be drawn with desirable to least desirable um, parts of a city. And then they would um, restrict African Americans and Latinos from living in certain neighborhoods, parts of neighborhoods based on the desirability. And so we'll talk more about it, but it was another form to keep people out. Um, we didn't talk about this, but these are the list of people that Coates brings up regarding their deaths and how it impacted him and his son. Um, we will bring up some of these examples later. John Crawford was the Walmart case. Um, of course, Trayvon Martin, you know. Michael Brown case, which started the Ferguson riots. And Prince Jones, which was the case that impacted Coates that got him to write the book. Prince was also very well off and well loved and um, a Howard graduate and um, uh, was gunned down by another, by a cop, an, an African-American cop in a very um, discriminatory police department district. We watched this video and I recommend you do too. You can just Google it. Um, he talks about white topias, white people fleeing to communities to escape having to integrate. And he talks about it in, in depth. Another video we watched is about uh, Dr. Christian Head, who had achieved a lot um, in his career at UCLA as one of the top surgeons. And he ended up um, having racist actions done against him um, that he talks about in the video. And he had to finally, uh, eventually bring suit and won, though it took him years, um, regarding this. And a uh, pretty horrific situation. We talked about that it continues to go on, um, even, you know, cases that are seem very small and no one gets killed or hurt, but still damaging to the community. The, the case on the right is the San Jose State case where the student was um, harassed by white um, dorm mates um, with nooses and, and the N-word and things, and they try to bring a case against the students and um, were turned down. So we need to reconsider this American dream and, and talk about it in more depth, okay? So um, in class, we started working on these discussion questions. These are just a few. There's more um, on the assignment list on Canvas that you'll be working on that are due Thursday night. So please let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing you on Thursday.